Welcome to my shop, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to take a reclaimed pile of junk that used to be an AC unit, and we're going to turn it into this, what I'm calling the little sucker. This is a vacuum pump. This right here, we can vacuum down AC systems in cars, homes, refrigerators, or even in vacuum chambers and blow some stuff up. And we're going to do all that, so keep watching and have a good time. Now this right here is pretty much exactly how I pulled it out of the unit. Um, wired up the exact same way it was and just looked at it real fast and I saw that I had my two power wires right here. And so I cut the copper, I mean I had actually quite a bit of copper, so, but I cut a little bit shorter and this one will cut even shorter. But there's my wiring. All I got to do is plug these into the outlet and it powers and you're done. You don't even need to really do anything. You can just put a plug on the end of these. Make sure you tape that up so you don't touch the, uh, the cap and, and zap yourself. Make sure you discharge it before you even start playing around with it. Tape it up pretty good. But you can just take a, a rubber fuel line. That's all this is. And this is my suction. That's my discharge. And we can start vacuuming it away. And here's some uh, gauge hose that I used on doing this unit right here. And I was able to just pull up one of my fittings far enough I was able to get that wedged on there, slid the clamp up on there, clamp that on, this screwed to my gauge set, and I was done. I didn't have to do anything to this. Nothing. And I was vacuuming away. But we're making it a little bit more professional, a little bit more user friendly. We're going to wire on some uh, switches right on the side. So we got just a old used light switch. I got a very shallow box we're going to put right here. And we got a little bit of a deeper box. So we're going to put our cap in here so we don't shock ourselves. Cap's going to go in there. This is going to go in there. That's going to go in there. Plates on top. All mounted right here. Cord coming out the end so we can plug it in. But I'm going to mount. I just cut out a scrap piece of metal. I'm actually going to weld that to the side of my compressor. So I can mount. So this can sit on it and the lower one can sit on it. And give me something sturdy. So I'm going to weld that on real fast. Just tack weld it. And as long as I'm going through the body, if I'm not I'm not grounding inside it, but I'm grounding to it and against it, the weld won't ruin anything. So, so I got the uh, capacitor just jammed in there with the two wires that feed power to it and feed power to the uh, compressor motor itself. And so this will just mount underneath this plate. And there's little wings, and in this box will mount above and there'll be the plate and stuff on but I'll temporarily just screw this down just to hold them together so it'll essentially mount it'll essentially mount like that so the cap is protected down in here where you can't accidentally shock yourself and then the switch will be mounted up on here so now we just need to wire all that up okay, so we got it all wired up we just got our hot wire come in, our black off of our extension cord, and the switch just interrupts it, going to this brownish, um, purplish, it's kind of a brown purple, which is kind of weird. But then the the white just goes straight through, so just standard like wiring a regular light switch, and the the ground I put on just gets grounded as well. So I can just jam all these into this shallow box. This is where I want my fitting to actually hook up right here and I'm going to use so newer style fittings use a little bit larger um, adapter versus the old style and so I want to use the fitting off of this unit right here because it has both the small and the large but if you're just doing um, the newer style stuff and you never mess around with the older style stuff you could actually get your fitting off of say one of these cheapo fill adapters because that's the the fitting you need right there but you could just undo that kind of hollow it out you know solder this on right here and then just solder that up in there or take out the guts of this before you solder it because you'll melt the o-rings and stuff like that but you could just solder that right on to that and you would be in the same situation but I'm going to take this apart because I'm never going to use this again well Probably not for a long time. We'll take this apart. 
not much in there, just a, a block. And I just soldered, I actually found a little teeny fitting that was the same thread. So if I ever wanted to reuse this on the original thing, I could. So I just soldered that right in there. It was a little, uh, I jammed it in there, I flared it out by jamming, punching there and just kind of wiggling it around. But it's all soldered on there nice and tight. So now we can install our fitting course with the uh, a little bit of Teflon tape. Oops. I can screw this on. Tighten it down exactly where I want it. So I bent up a random piece of steel for the handle and tack welded on another little piece just to support this little fitting right here with zip ties and a little bit more of the foam padding, but spray painted a little bit black, just touching up where somewhere where some of the weld spots are. But this same thing can be made if I wanted to hook this as an outlet. I could fill up tires or anything else with this end right here because that'll push out close to uh, 200, maybe even 300 psi out of that side. But I'm just interested in this side. I got plenty of plenty of air compressor so now let's go suck some stuff so we got our test contraption right here um, a bottle jug of water and I've measured it out um, and it's roughly 80 degrees Fahrenheit and so with my handy dandy chart 80 degrees I should be able to pull that's about 25 microns if I can get this to boil so the um, the lower the t pressure the lower the inches of mercury the higher the inches of mercury the actually lower the temperature of water boils. So we'll just set that on there and we'll switch it on and see if we can make this water boil. And that'll give us a good test to see if this is even a good pump. Because most pumps you see that are commercial, they'll have a micron rating and a 25 micron pump is a uh, pretty good pump. There we go, I'm starting to see some bubbles. The water's starting to boil. And it is boiling. We got boiling water. It's not a fast, fast boil, but that is a boil. So this pump can pull at least 25 microns, which is pretty dang good. So I dumped out all the water, and now we got a bunch of little water droplets and stuff around. This would represent what would be in your AC system. But we'll see if we can turn that to vapor and suck that out. So you should be able to watch this whole thing just steam up as it pulls out. There it goes, you start seeing steam as it just starts pulling out all the moisture, just sucking it out, boiling it off. Shipping bubbles. Jam those in there. Ready? It's gonna pop. Oops, I don't have that tight. There we go. I don't think any of them are left. No, they're all gone. That was too easy. This is a shipping, instead of packing peanuts, these new air filled. There we go. Air filled packing giant peanut things. Ready for this? Wow, look at that. There's barely any vacuum in there. Let's let it shrink back down for a second. Just teasing you now. Okay, let's let it go. Now you guys can go suck an egg. Literally. Let's put this in this water. It's a sinker. What happens when you really suck an egg? Like, you really, really suck it. This is what happens. You ready? Pulls the air right through the shell. Let's see if we can make it hard boiled. There we go. We're hard boiling it now.
sucking eggs. Just as a parting shot, we did have to uh, paint it up a little bit just to make it look good. This is all freehand, so it's not perfect, but just kind of gives that nice little uh, vintage feel to it. You know, on off back, 25 microns, but just having fun, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed.